we're probably wondering what character we're going to be drawing today because it's just a D100 out there, which it's an exclusive character that we're celebrating for the Disney 100 years. Um, and so today we're going to be focusing on the 2020s, a very current era. Um, we are going to be drawing Bruno Madrigal from Encanto. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on Bruno here. Bruno's going to start off with an oval shape, kind of like a grape or olive. And I'm just going to go around and around. You want to start off really nice and light. And I think I forgot to say this, actually. But our pencils don't have erasers. So you want to just keep in mind starting off really nice and light because you're just going to darken in the parts of your drawing you want to keep. Now, once you've got your oval here in place, Go ahead and cut this in half with a vertical guideline. And I'm going to extend my vertical guideline a little bit further down here. Sort of like I've got an olive on a toothpick or something. And then I'm going to add in a horizontal guideline. I'd say it's going to be a little bit higher than our halfway point here. Um, and that actually happens to be because some of our older characters, uh, our eye lines go up as they age. So lower eye lines are for younger characters and higher eye lines are for older characters. And Bruno and the rest of uh, the triplets there, so like Peppa and uh, Julieta, they're actually triplets, so they're all 50 years old. Now at the bottom of my oval shape here, I'm going to add in a spaced out number 11 here. He doesn't have like a super long neck, so this is going to be for his neck here. Just two lines going down here. And then I'll add in some sloping shoulders here on the sides. You, want, you don't want these to be like super uh, horizontal or straight out. That's gonna give Bruno a little bit more of a broad look. And Bruno has lots of charms, but I wouldn't say being super confident or strong is one of them. So I'm gonna add in his shoulders, but a little bit more drooping. All right, haven't really locked anything in quite yet, but we're going to start to add in a couple of his features here and lock in some of those shapes now. So I'm going to start here at my vertical guideline, a little bit lower here, and this is going to act as kind of like his undershirt. I'm not sure how familiar we are with uh, Bruno's outfit, but he's got kind of that green poncho, and he has this collared shirt underneath. So I'm adding in a letter V shape first, right by my vertical guideline. And then for this top part of his collar, I'll add in a straight line going up, kind of like another number 11. And then this part looks kind of like a number seven or something that's sitting on top of his shoulders. And that's kind of the top collar of his shirt. And that's just going to rest right there on our shoulders. Still keeping everything really nice and light. Haven't locked in anything yet. Underneath this part here, we're going to add in that hood of his collar. So the hood here is going to be like another letter V shape, sitting very close to where we added in that little neck for his shirt. And then this letter V here, we're going to use this edge to create a sort of like pizza slice shape. Or you can think of it like a little sideways triangle. Or another letter V, a very stretched out letter V shape. But I like to think of it as pizza slices. Because we like to compare everything to food here. We're starving artists after all. <laughs> now I'm going to round out the little part of the shoulder here for that end of the pizza slice. A little crust part that people throw away. And then on the sides of his shoulders here, he's just got one more little stripe. So just these two little rainbow curves next to each other. And that's really it for his bottom part here, what he wears. I'm going to go back in and just lock everything in. And now when we say that term locking in, what that really means is just pushing harder on your pencil so that your lines are starting to get a little bit darker and thicker. And that's how you're going to show you want to keep something permanent in your drawing. So I'll go back in and lock in all my lines here. And now what I really appreciate about Encanto is there's a lot of symbolic uh, metaphors and like imagery and symbolism in the movie. Um, and that even goes down all the way to what the characters wear. Now for Bruno, uh, what color is his poncho? I already said earlier, but 
green. Green, right? Now it actually has a very specific kind of name. Uh, Disney coined this green color, uh, go away green. And go away green is actually a color we didn't invent just for Bruno. Um, it's been around for a while and we use go away green very strategically uh, throughout the parks when we have things under construction or we've just got buildings that are in sight but we don't actually want you to really pay attention to those buildings we paint it in go away green and naturally our eyes just kind of are distracted by other things we don't really notice anything that's in that go away green and so if you look back to uh, other posters of in Kanto, like before the movie got really big, um, there were posters with all the family members, even Bruno, but it was really hard to notice him because he was in that go away green and very purposefully or intentionally kind of hidden. Now I'm gonna use my pencil here to give this a little bit of shading. His undershirt part here is a little bit darker than the rest of his poncho. So I'm just gonna shade that in a little bit darker and then I'll use the edge of my pencil here to shade in this bottom half here. All right, once we've got this part though, we've got a nice little foundation here for Bruno already. So I'm gonna jump in to his facial features here. And I'm gonna start off with his nose. You wanna leave a little bit of space underneath your horizontal guideline, but your nose is gonna rest here on that vertical guideline. And it looks sort of like a potato. It's gonna look kind of silly. We wanna keep this nose really nice and light. This is just kind of a guideline on how we're going to create his nose. It's not actually gonna look like it's giving me elbow, you know? <laughs> so from his nose here, at the top, I'm gonna to create these very steep slopes here for the fridge of his nose. They almost touch here at the top, but they're gonna go right along my vertical guideline here. And then you can use that outer edge of our oval shape here that we created for his nose. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit more shape here, like barely making a little point on the edges and barely making a little point here at the bottom. So you give it a little bit more of a nose shape. All right, once you've got this nose in place, we can add in the rest of our bottom half of Bruno's face here. So you wanna add in his smile. And of course, Bruno's always a little bit shy, a little unsure. Um, so we're not gonna give him like a big toothy grin or a big confidence smirk. He's got a little bit more of a meeker smile. So underneath my nose here, I'm gonna stretch out basically like a flat line. And then kind of at the ends, I'll just curve it up a tiny bit here. Or like a very flattened out U curve. Now actually before I lock in or add in any other details here, totally forgot, I'm gonna carve out a Bruno's head shape here. So we have a good foundation to add in the rest of his facial hair here. So on the sides of my oval, since we're not gonna keep his head super rounded out, I'm actually going to carve into it a little bit and give him a slightly more defined jawline here. So I'll give it a slight little point here at my vertical guideline just slightly carving into my oval shape here. Not any drastic changes or anything. And then once I've got that kind of jawline here in place, I'll go ahead and jump back here to my smile. Now, I'm gonna add in another number 11 here, right underneath his nose, kind of like he has these two long nose hairs. And then we're gonna add in his little feet on our nose hairs here. And these are gonna to stretch to the sides of his smile or the ends of his smile here. I don't know if you guys remember that scene in Mulan where the matchmaker has like the little ink on her hands and she's like, dignity, and she draws like a little goatee. That's what we're gonna add onto our Bruno here. So from the ends of his nose or his little feet here from that top part of his mustache, I'm just gonna bring down some lines here to meet with that bottom part of his jaw or his chin. Now we don't want to make him look like the matchmaker from Mulan. So we're gonna add in, when we're thinking at the bottom, he's got a little more of like a goatee. And it actually has 
Again, that symbolism, it has this hourglass shape. So I'm just gonna make an upside down triangle and a right side up triangle there to make like that hourglass shape, which of course relates to his power. Do you guys remember what his power is? Yeah, kind of like time, right? You can kind of see into the future, right? And he uh, uses like the sand to make like these glass portraits of a vision. So once you've got in his little goatee, I'm just adding in a little bit more thickness there at the bottom to kind of fill out his beard down there. And then we want to add in a couple more details on this part here. So I'm just going to add in that little kind of crease between our smile and our nose. Just keeping that really nice and light. And then he has um, little dimples too. So on the sides of his smile, add in these little lines for his dimples. That's the bottom half of Bruno. All right. Let's go ahead and keep moving on because he's got a lot of steps here. We wanna add in his eyes. His eyes are gonna rest there on that horizontal guideline and they're pretty close together. So they go up like halfway up that top part of his head shape here. And I'm just gonna really lightly sketch out some eyes first. So just my shape here. And they'll look a little bit spooked out first. It's kind of like something crazy happened in his rat soap opera. And he's like dying to know what happens next. So I'm gonna add in some darker lines here to lock in those eye shapes. And then if you want, you can add in a little bit of extra thickness here to the top part of his eye. And that gives the illusion like he's got an eyelash line instead of giving him individual eyelashes. It just kind of helps frame the eyes a little bit more. So I'm just gonna go back over the top parts of my eye shape here and just make them a little bit darker and thicker. Now to wake Bruno up, we wanna add in his pupils here. You can give him a different kind of pupil if you want. You can give him like hearts or stars or something. I'm just gonna give him some classic pupils here. So I'm gonna have him looking out at all of you, keeping my pupils here closer to the center, but I'm not gonna to touch the left side of my eyes or he might look a little cross-eyed, which is okay. Maybe he's Jorge today. And then above his eye here, we wanna give him some eyebrows too. Now his eyebrows are going to be tilted a little bit upward to go with his expression. And I like to just kind of outline the eyebrows first. And he has like a little bit of an arched eyebrow there. And then I go back and thicken it up so that he's not stuck in the early 2000s. But totally up to you however you want to make his eyebrows there. Now once we've got him all done here, all we really need to add is what? His hair, right? He actually has got a lot of hair. And a lot of the Madrigals actually have this very curly hair. Um, and kind of similar to Mirabelle, he's got very, he's got a lot of similarities to Mirabelle actually. Um, he does have very similar curly hair. So what I'm actually gonna start out with here for my Bruno is I'm gonna add in his little curl that goes towards the front of his face. So I'm gonna start on the left side of my vertical guideline here, and it's sort of like a number three, or like a sideways letter M. That's gonna be his main kind of thicker curl. And then I'll just add in the other side here of his curl, again, another letter three, or like a letter M shape. And I'll lock that in. Once you have that main curl, all we really need to add in is the sides of his face here have a couple of curls that just frame his face shape. I'm just making squiggly marks here really. Um, so you don't have to follow exactly how I'm doing it, but you do want to add in a couple of curls that are kind of framing his face there. And then on the top part of his head shape here above that bay, you want to add in that same side part here. So I'm just going to make these cloud shapes here all the way around his head shape. And they don't have to be perfect at all. Uh, they don't have to be super fluffy, really however you want to add these in. But I'll just add in these little hill shapes. And his hair is a little bit more of like a bob. So at the bottom here, it's going to connect to his neck there. But I'll just go all the way around, adding in these nice little cloud shapes for his hair. 
But another thing that Disney really uh, worked hard on in the design of their characters here for the Madrigal family was in their hairstyles, is they all actually represent different types of curly hair. I don't know how familiar we are with hair out there, but um, curly hair can actually be rated on a scale. Um, and so Mirabelle's hair, you can tell, is a little bit uh, curlier than like Luisa's hair, oh, which is even curlier than Isabella's hair, which is almost like straight. And if you think about like Peppa and her family, like um, Antonio and Camilo, they all have tighter curls. Um, so Disney really worked hard to make sure that all different kinds of hair types were really represented in this film, which I think is pretty neat. But once you've got your hairstyles locked in, you want to add in a couple extra details here, just a couple extra curls all the way throughout his hair. Again, I'm just making kind of like squiggly lines, number threes, little like gummy worm shapes, however you want to create your curls. Totally up to you. There's no right or wrong way to do this part here. But once you've added that in, go ahead and use the edge of your pencil and give it a little bit of a shading as well. And that's really the last step here we need for Bruno. Anything else you want to add in is extra credit. Totally up to you. Maybe you want to give him some rat friends in the background. You want to give him some salt so he can throw it over his shoulder because he's very superstitious. Maybe you want to add in his little plate setting because I don't know about you guys, but that's the part of the movie that made me cry. When he has like his little setting like right outside of his family's um, dining room. Oh, that was so sad. But the most important step here of any artist's drawing is going to be an artist's signature. So go ahead and find a nice spot on your paper and sign your name nice and proud. Because you just drew a person, which is very challenging. So kudos to you guys and sign your name. We did it. We drew Bruno, who we shouldn't talk about. All right, in the end, did we have a fun time, everyone? Yeah. Yes, all right. Well, I'd love to see everyone's Bruno, so we're going to have a quick art show. On the count of three, let's flip our boards. One, two, three, Bruno. These are super cute. How we have time to draw two of him, I don't know. Great job on this side, too, with the details. Oh, we nailed his facial features over here in the middle. Nice shading and detailing here on this side as well. Oh my gosh, you look fantastic. You're so secure, round of applause. Nice and a miraculous job. You all graduate from the Animation Academy. You're welcome to come back and join us again for another class. Can I give my Bruno to the two birthday kiddos up here? Yeah.